So far, we've been concentrating on reproductive characters, but vegetative characters are also very helpful for plant identification. Angus introduced us to some of these terms, but just to reinforce that, this leaf is a simple leaf consisting of a blade attached to the stem by a petiole, and that petiole drawn out into the main vein of the leaf, the midrib. In families like the roses and the peas, some of these leaves also have little leaf-like outgrowths at the base of the petiole. Where the petiole joins onto the stem, you'll find a little auxiliary bud, which can grow out into a new shoot system or a new branch or become flowers. In contrast to these simple leaves, these are all compound leaves. So rather than having one big lamina, each leaf is made up of little leaflets. They might resemble feathers, uh, in this case, this one is a pinnate and looks like an ash or bipinnate divided in this plane as well, uh, re resembling plants like a gladitia. And of course, there are terms to describe these other compound leaves. So you have trifoliate leaves or palmate leaves, or these are again pinnate leaves but this one is odd pinnate, and this one is even pinnate, and we have our bipinnate leaf again. Another important clue is how the leaves are arranged on the stems. The most common pattern is that leaves alternate up the stem, as in these first two uh, illustrations here. The second one, differs in that it's disticus, which means that the leaves are flattened in a single plane. A much rarer arrangement is if the leaves are opposite on the stem. So each leaf pair, each leaf is matched with an opposite pair on the other side. This occurs in some families, such as the mint family. If those opposite pairs of leaves are at right angles to the preceding ones, then the arrangement is opposite and decussate. If you have more than three leaves originating at a single point, the leaf arrangement is called whirled. The leaves occur in a whirl around the stem. The pattern of growth in most plants is corline. That is, the leaves arise from a stem. But in plants that have a basal or radical arrangement, the stem is shortened so that they all appear to arise from the same point. These plants, like dandelions, usually have a specialised stem to bear the flowers. We've already mentioned some accessory st structures for leaves in the stipules of plants like roses and peas, but in one particular family, in the polygonaceae, uh, plants like rhubarb and dock have these specialised ochrea, these stocking-like membranes that sheath the stem where the leaf arises. The way that the leaves are attached to the stem can also differ from the normal leaf stalk or petiole. In some cases, you can have the leaf extending down the stem, or sheathing the stem, or fusing around the stem, or appearing jointed at a particular angle. There's a whole lexicon describing leaf margins, but we won't dwell on this. But you can see it's possible to classify these into rounded toothed margins, such as these crenate leaf margins, or lobed leaves, and these sharply toothed margins, such as these serrate leaves, or these dentate or toothed leaf margins.
And lastly, again, there's a whole suite of terms for different leaf shapes. They can be grouped according to whether they are widest near the end of the leaf, or the middle of the leaf, or near the base of the leaf. Again, it's not necessary to remember all of these terms, but having words to describe an obovate leaf, or a chordate heart-shaped leaf, or a hastate arrowhead-shaped leaf, will enable you to see those different shapes.